Hello world, welcome back to another CTF Learn Challenge video. In this video, we're going to be solving Reykjavik. Let's get into it. So this is a reverse engineering challenge and it is worth 10 points. Good beginning reversing challenge. Jump into GDB and start looking for the flag. Now there's multiple softwares we could use to solve this, but we will be using GDB to solve this as the challenge suggests. GDB is pretty much the oldest reversing tool out there, but it is still useful in many regards, especially for just some basic reversing or even advanced reversing if you really want to use it for that. For the convenience of this challenge, I've already downloaded the file to my Kali box. So we'll go ahead and crack that open. Now, the first thing I want to do before we get into this challenge is I actually want to use a proper decompiler on the file itself so that we can kind of get an idea of what's going on inside the executable, because what a decompiler will allow us to do is actually look at not only the disassembly for it, it'll also allow us to look at pseudocode kind of, or it'll convert the assembly to something that's more readable for us because assembly is kind of hard to read. You'll see in a moment what that looks like. So I'm going to actually use Cutter, which is a graphical interface for Radari 2, which is just another reversing tool that's available out there. And it's op completely open source. You don't have to pay for it. I believe I stuck that in, yep, right there. So all we got to do is run that. Okay, we will, we already have our file here, so we can open that. And that's fine. Now, we do have the option to debug it here, and we could probably figure out the answer that way, but trust me, GDB for this challenge is probably the easiest way to go. We select a decompiler here, and actually what I can do is I can do view, and then group drop, drag, and then I can drag this over to the right here, and I can reselect to some assembly, and now we kind of have a side-by-side -side of the decompiler and the disassembler. So we'll go to our main function since that's probably what we want to look at. And if we scroll down, we'll see that we have, as I said, you know, this is much more readable than this. So it converted our disassembler code into a higher level programming language. And I think it's C here or C++, whatever. Anyways, what I should have done first, however, is actually show you guys what running the program looks like. That way we can get an idea of what we're looking for. So we'll just go ahead and open up a new tab and we'll go ahead and run the program they gave us. And it says, this is how we're supposed to use it. So we need to actually enter a flag in and we'll just use a test flag for this. Why not just test? Okay. And then, sorry, dude, CTF learn test is not the flag. Okay, so basically, if we put in the right flag, it'll tell us we're correct. Any other flag, it's gonna tell us we're not correct. And if that should follow suit with what we have in our cutter decompiler. So if we come down here, we do have an else condition here that does contain, okay, well, let's break it down. So we can see the error message right here that we just got but we also say, congratulations, you found the flag right here. So if we look at this if condition, we can see that IVAR2 is being compared to zero. And if we look up here, IVAR2 is being set to strcmp, which is a string compare, uStack56 and puvar1. Well, puvar1, whoops, puvar1, let me bring that back. puvar1 is up here, argv1. So puvar1 is actually the argument that we're passing into the executable, right? When we first run it. And that, so that'll be our flag that we're trying to guess. So knowing that it's comparing something, my fault, it's comparing something on the stack to our flag. And if they match, then we're gonna get this message. That's what the zero is for. If strcmp comes out with a zero, that means the two strings that it's comparing inside it's, you know, what you're passing in, right? So this string compared to this string are equal. If it's like a negative one, then it's going to be not equal. So ivar2 is storing the result of the strcmp function. So if ivar2 or the result of strcmp is zero, then we get this congratulations, you found the flag. Now, if you'll notice up here, there is a false flag you could find, and that's definitely a rare herring. That is not what we want to do. Now, interesting enough, let's look at this uStack56 value. 
If we come right here, we'll see it's this is, you know, a reference to this and it says underscore data exhort with this. And then you have a bunch of other stack variables here that are being set to more addresses being referenced or values at these addresses being exhort with these a b a b a b hexadecimal numbers. So this is probably what's composing our actual flag. And it's not in plain text because they're trying to obscure it, right? They're trying to obfuscate it so that we can't just read the plain text flag. Otherwise strings would have worked on the executable which I should have done first because proper reverse engineering practice always states that you must run strings on the file first, just in case you see something. So let's go ahead and run it just for kicks and giggles, even though we're way past that point now. And all we're really going to see is, yeah, okay, the false flag. And um, hopefully that didn't throw any of you off and you didn't put that in because this is quite clearly a red herring. And then, you know, we see the congratulation message. So nothing really too useful there. Now's the point where we dive into GDB, right? And we'll, you know, of course, leave our cutter application open just in case we need to come back to it. Oh, one thing I wanna look at real quick is our STR CMP function will look something like this inside GDB. So we just need to look for this inside of our main function and probably put a breakpoint at it. All right, so let's go ahead and Maximize this a bit so you guys can see it better. Clear that. Okay, so in order to run GDB, you just type in GDB, but we actually want to have arguments for Reykjavik, right? Otherwise, we could just type in the file name there, but we want args, Ray, and then you're just going to follow that up by Reykjavik, and then you can put in whatever arguments after that, and it'll read them in as part of the running process. We'll just do our test. Okay. Now, if we type run here, we'll see that, okay, it still gives us that same error message, but we have a little bit more information here. That's not what, necessarily what we want, though. You'll notice that this says GDB Peta, and that's a Python extension that gives it a bit more functionality and more pretty formatting, and it gives you a lot more output and things so that you don't have to find them out for yourself. It does a lot of the grunt work for you, and it prints it out nice and neatly. So. That's all it is, and I highly recommend adding it onto your GDB if you haven't done so. So we'll clear so we can see it better. And we'll say start. And what that's going to do is it's going to basically execute our program up to main, like the main function. And so now we have a temporary point rate point and main. So that's where we're currently at right now. So if we disassemble here, we can actually see, you know, something similarly akin to our assembly code here. So why don't we go ahead and just kind of drag this over here so we can see it better. And I'll drag this over here. That way we can kind of match what we're seeing over here with what we're seeing over here. Now the addresses are different because these are offset from these and these are offset from those. So it's not an exact one for one match, but it should be something pretty close. So if we kind of come down, we'll actually see a STR CMP call right here. And that is going to match our STR CMP call right here. Now, again, it does look different, but that's because these are different disassemblers. What well, our interest here is this, because what it's doing is it should have our full flag on the stack that it's comparing there. So we should be able to see it if we breakpoint at it and view the values that are on the stack there, right? In theory. So we'll copy that address. And how this works is we'll do B for breakpoint, and then you're gonna do an asterisk say at this address, and then we're gonna paste that in, press enter, okay, so now we have a breakpoint. So now we're gonna press R for run, okay? And then it's going to stop at the breakpoint we just set in main. And if we come up here, we can actually see on our stack that it did indeed find the string that we're comparing to or the flag on the stack. And if you come back even further, you'll see that it's in the RDI register. The R references mean this is a 64-bit executable. And that's that's the beauty of PETA. I, I, I don't remember if GDB by itself would have shown you all that. I don't know, I don't think it does, but that's that's the greatness behind PETA is it will show you all that information, like all the values on the stack and everything. If we didn't have PETA, we'd have to reference each register on the stack and see what each one contains one by one. When that's not, you know, that's not efficient. So. Luckily, again, PETA 
can do all that for us. So that will be our flag. I love Iceland. So we're gonna take that and we're gonna come over to our flag and put that in, submit it, and there we go. If you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comment section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.